Sasquatch, thank you very much for tuning into my live show today. Oh my God, it's such an exciting time. Like I'm, there's new technology coming out. There's new people coming out this year. So right now I'm actually, uh, I'm planning and working on my exped expeditions. Uh, I'm doing good work on, on the YouTube channel here. I now have Thursdays and Sundays that I'm doing besides my Wednesday live show. And we also have Kyle working real hard, making sure you got your podcasts. <coughs> so the channel is doing amazing. Um, and I'm super happy about the new people. If you watch the last show, who do we have now? We have this incredible, famous MD medical doctor, uh, Garth. I'd like to talk about Garth for a second, <clears throat> just so we're clear. So a lot of people are like, what's the big deal with a plastic surgeon? The, the man built his way up. Like he is currently a plastic surgeon, but he was actually an ER surgeon. The guy, I actually called him a PhD and he got upset with me. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm an MD. And I could have eight PhDs with the medical training that I have. So, and you must understand, so forget about the plastic stuff. He's actually an expert when it comes to the anatomy, especially of the face. People pay him. He's a millionaire because he fixes people's faces with cutting and splicing and stuff. You got to understand the advantages of that when it comes to dealing with, like the man looked at my Sasquatch photographs and based on his anatomy of the face and understanding, he's like, that looks legit. I'm coming out with this guy. So, and having having a man with that kind of knowledge and connectivity and educational background, I mean, his heroes that he's been mentored by are some of the greatest medical doctors that have ever lived. And these are, you know, and he's at the pinnacle of his profession. He's highly respected and admired. And although a lot of us, especially I think in this genre, are like, what's up with plastic surgery? It's not something that we're involved in. We can at least respect the, the man's extreme medical knowledge that's mind-blowing. And he's he's incredibly involved. You just saw part one, if you watch the video, of the incredible... Well, I just... I was actually... Part one is just kind of a... I guess a bit of a teaser. And I was happy because... did If you didn't see that part one, guys, it's the lay of the land. I actually do like a... a well, Garth had a drone out there. He did a 360 with it. And they put it up. Like, I, you know, I got it, put it up. I know James has done a 362, and I'm still, James's footage is going into the documentary. But uh, it was just so nice to get that, that, that look, you know, that, that spin around. And, uh, oh, my God, like, there's just, but, well, I'm going to talk about it. There's a new drone that's come out, a new thermal drone. Uh, I was looking at one last year that was about $24,000. Um, it's uh, the DJI Matrice. It's a fantastic drone, incredible capabilities, and, and super happy about it. But uh, just wasn't able to procure that yet, just based on, you know, some financial difficulties due to COVID and, and other problems that I had last year. But there's a drone now that's uh, out that's got thermal capabilities. It's blowing my mind. 45 minutes of flight time. You'll probably get a good 35 minutes of flight time. And I'm seeing its capabilities, guys. I will literally, so, and I talked to a couple of people about this today. I didn't get to talk to, you know, uh, in person, some of the expeditioners. I mean, we've had incredible success. Imagine anyone, so all you expeditioners out there that have been around or close to a Sasquatch. Imagine there's a Sasquatch out there. We fly that drone up into the air and go fly around for 35 minutes, seeing everything within, let's say, a six kilometer diameter. Or even radius. So it'd be six kilometers one way, six kilometers the other. So we could do loops and nothing, not a, squ a squirrel wouldn't be able to hide from us. Never mind a Sasquatch's heat signature. So the ramifications of that are absolutely mind-boggling enormous. So there's there's another layer to that that's very complicated, you know, in filming Sasquatch and having that intent. But uh, I'm going to work it all out, guys. Like this is this is very, very exciting. I I can't i'm almost speechless to say I, I can't see like the first week when a sasquatch comes around i fly that drone and i go have a look at him i mean it's silent at 100 feet i'm gonna fly it at 200 feet dead silent you can't hear it I, I don't mean like a deer couldn't hear it with their exceptional hearing it's silent at, at 100 feet i'm flying it 200 feet dead silent you know beautiful imagery thermal pinpointing on on, a, on any any heat signature and then an hd camera to zoom in on it there's no canopy in the forest where I do my work. It's all, it's most, it's about 95% pine trees. So they have no canopy. They're, they're triangular shaped. So it's such an exciting time. Oh my God. Like it's so exciting. Actually, almost to the point where I knew this was going to happen. One day some kid's going to have a, 
a 16K thermal drone that flies indefinitely on solar power and looks at the size of a mosquito and goes anywhere. If you don't think that's coming, you're not paying attention, right? Did you have the old cell phones? Remember those old things that were these big, giant cell phones and they get melting hot and they only worked for an hour? And they did nothing. All they did was they, you work as a big, now look at cell phones. Their, their, their televisions, their, their radios, their music players, their, you know, all the, you, you, you pay with stuff on them. You, you can't fly on an airplane without a cell phone anymore with its capabilities and, and, and whatnot. And uh, I've seen drones. I had the first drones, the very first, man, this drone made in Australia. I got the damn thing. It didn't fly. So, you know, it was a pain in the ass. You had to become like an aeronautical, you had to be an aeronautical engineer. They thought I was an aeronautical engineer and I could get it flying. Otherwise, you don't really have much hope. Now anybody can fly these things. They're amazing. They're, and in 20 years, oh my God, I couldn't even imagine the technology. So I started doing drones a decade ago and the technology is right through the roof with what DJI has to offer now. So uh, it's a very exciting time where, where I, you know, technology is advantageous and I am going to use it. But it's, it's come to that crossroads where, uh, you know, I'm focused on getting back to nature and reconnecting with the earth and spirituality while technology is growing. So we have to come to that equilibrium and find that balance. And, and I'm very confident that the majority of you really understand what I'm talking about. So hello, Andy. Hello, Barry. Aloha from Hawaii. Man, that's so cool. That, uh, what's, what do you call yourself? Hawaiian, uh, seller, uh, a bunch of stuff. You're from Hawaii. <laughs> the, the Hawaii person. Jason, hello. Hello, Dominic. What's up? Everybody's saying hi. Massachusetts, Montana. I love Montana. Hello, James. Thanks for tuning in today. James, you should really appreciate that. Uh, don't be jealous. Don't be upset. I'm sorry I didn't. I know James is there going, I did 360s. I was up there filming. I know you were, but uh, it just it just came across my desk. I had to do that Sasquatch Sunday video. And then Garth just kept pumping that stuff out to me. It just kept popping up in the downloads and I just threw it up there. And the video kind of evolved during the day where I was I was doing something very different. And I just saw that I could really talk about that 360, like, you know, where the Sasquatch come down from, where the roads are, where we get the apples and where we get our sightings and stuff. So it just flowed really well. So uh, I'm very excited about that. I, I, know, I know anybody who's been on an expedition, there's literally you know, dozens of people who have been out to that expedition site with me, they'll just be, should be so stoked to see that. So first time we're here, thank you for tuning in, Jason, Jason H, I'll call you. Uh, boom to James. So Jason, we say boom because the Sasquatch called themselves the boom. They stomp their foot or their feet on the ground really hard. It makes a boom, start times boom, boom. And that's them saying hi because they are, they call themselves the boom. Sending greens via mind speak and chat. <laughs> talk a lot about mind speak i was just talking to new expeditioners today and uh, making sure that uh, it's it, i i'm of the age so in my late 40s that uh when i was younger you know esp wasn't real it wasn't accepted as a reality you were, it was paranormal when you were a kook those days are gone and and this new expeditioner i was talking to today uh he gets a lot of ridicule and stuff like, how could there be a Sasquatch out there? How could it be? And the answer is, it's really simple. Imagine this. So ESP is an accepted reality. It exists. If you don't think so, you're living in the dark ages. Wake up. They teach it in university. They teach it in psychology. It's a fact. Third eye spies, remote viewing. It's real. Deal with it. So get over your paradigm. Now imagine this. Let's take it to another level. Imagine there's a hominid species, the most advanced hominid species, that lives in perfect equilibrium in the wilderness and they communicate via ESP, extrasensory perception. You can't sneak up on this species because they can feel you. They can feel your intent. It's as simple as that. That's what's going on out there, ladies and gentlemen, is we haven't found these this species because the other thing that happens is when you when you when you come, you become empathic. You, you, you cannot just communicate. It's through feelings. You can feel someone's intent. You feel they're angry or dece deceptive or hostile or happy or loving or good or evil. You can feel these things. That that goes hand in hand with extra sensory perception. That's a fact. So these beings live based on that. That's why the Blackfoot call Sabe. What Sabe represents is honesty, truth, and integrity. You can't lie when you're speaking from your heart through extrasensory perceptions so but what comes after that 
the ability to feel into the earth, the ability to feel into the trees and the terrain, the ability to see into the future, clairvoyance. And my answer is yes. Now I'm pushing the, the paradigm because clairvoyance, is it not proven though? Man, so many people. Like clairvoyance is where uh, just ESP was, you know, probably 20 years ago. It's basically on the cusp. People see things. People have clairvoyance. It's real. And when you practice ESP and you're at that level and you're naked and connected to nature and you're your whole life is based on your spirituality. Uh, you know, you're a heightened individual and that's what they are. Welcome to the show. So that's what I explain to people. So it's really not that hard. So, and gosh, if you did find a body, they would just cover it up. There's so much lying. We're such a deceitful species. Let's be honest, right? I'm here. Hi. And I show people Sasquatch and I have real Sasquatch photographs and videos. I take people out and I show them Sasquatch and I'm still still not believed i'm still not like like someone someone introduces like uh just a couple weeks ago there was this crappy piece of drone footage uh, clearly fake i'm going to talk about it in one of my upcoming videos with a sasquatch this guy in a sasquatch suit's walking through the bush and that's all viral and these people are like this is the greatest sasquatch footage ever it it's not even a moon gas shadow compared to what i've shot it's just you give people crystal clear footage you give people profound evidence of a sasquatch that's nine feet tall running faster than any human being can run and they go, Shmeh. you show up with DNA and they go, eh. and then you show Survivor Man and Jeff Meldrum and dozens of people a Sasquatch. And they go, Meh. it's, it's, it's should be if, if Sasquatch is headlines, which it is all the time. Why isn't this headlines? And the answer is I have been headlines. It's just people get sick of me, I guess. Here he is again with more footage and showing more people Sasquatch and doing all these amazing things. And now oh, he's got DNA again. It's not even a story. If I come back with DNA again, they go, didn't you already do that? Yeah, but you didn't listen. Oh, it was a story for a week, and it was. It was a big story. Everybody ran it. Hey, there's DNA. It's an unknown hominid. And then two weeks later, it's like, yeah, I don't even know. And then three years later, five, six years later, whatever, it's like, yeah, we don't care. So what? You got DNA and photographs, and you show people Sasquatch. It's like, come on. So I don't know what to say. I was wondering how something so big doesn't make noise. Oh, man, they can just be so silent, dude. If you saw the way they move with fluidity and the way they're connected, what I was just talking about, like the way they feel the earth, it's their home. You must understand that there's no human being that walks around naked their whole lives, born and raised in the wilderness. Like it's so, it's so first nature to them. It's ridiculous. Like, you know, people like you see, I've seen pretty amazing first nations people and Indian native people. They're extremely quiet. I can go quiet, man. Come on. I could kick some ass and go quiet. You're never gonna, you're never gonna hear me coming. I've done it dozens of times. Walk right up on people, give them a little, ah! just walked right up on you. The ground and the terrain is soft, and you just, you just know where to walk. You learn, you figure it out, or you don't walk there, right? There are, are areas I've been to where there's leaves all over the ground. Every step is crunchy. They don't go there. Stay away from that spot. Find a way around it, or find a pathway that goes on the logs. The trees are all falling down. You walk on them. They have agility and abilities, guys. Like, they are literally, they're the greatest trackers and wilderness experts that have ever lived, training the greatest track. Do you understand the layers of that? Like, these, these hominids teach. They learn through experience. Like, when native people with their hunting skills and tracking skills all being lost, the Sasquatch, they're just getting sharper. They play tracking games and verse each other. The greatest trackers in the world verse each other for tracking games. Let's play hide and seek, Sasquatch. Like, this is another level, guys, of, like, the stuff that I've seen them do, the way they dupe me. It's like, I'm like a little kid. They could just do that little kid trick where they walk backwards into their tracks or, you know, follow through into a, a field and jump up from tree to tree. There's just a million ways they get away from me. So they're so far ahead. And, and they learn these traits from each other. That's what primates do. Deer and bears and stuff, they teach a little bit, but it's not the same. Hominids teach for, for a lifetime, you know? Look at how much we teach each other. So... Hello, Sling Blake. Um, hey, <clears throat> says, hey, <coughs> hey there from Kentucky. <coughs> Hello, Kentucky. I heard it's being nice to Jason first time. Could Sasquatch DNA be fused with human DNA and produce a hybrid? Um, <clears throat> Sasquatch DNA has already been infused with human DNA. So that's that's the big genome. 
19 signs on the female side. There's human mitochondria, female human mitochondria on the female side. So it's already been done. They're actually, as, as crazy as it sounds, they're the same species as us. They're not a subspecies. The definition of a species is they can breed with a human being and produce viable offspring, offspring that can breed back. And they've done that. So they're actually supposed to be the same species, which I have a hard time with, man, because they're so big. They're so awesome. They're so different. But uh, that's it. Have you ever mind spoke with the Bigfoot? Yes. This time, this year, many times. And this year, I literally had Kyle and Ashley out there with me. And I was, the, the Sasquatch were reading Kyle or Ashley, mostly Kyle. And I was picking up stuff I didn't know about Kyle. Kyle has an older sister and he doesn't live with them and they, they don't live together anymore. Mm -hmm. even, even in, I think in cooperation. So, uh, the Sasquatch read that in Kyle and the Sasquatch communicated that to me and I verbalized it to Kyle. I was like, how did you know that? And we were doing that for an hour. And then Ashley afterwards said, yeah, Todd, there's like five things you did that you couldn't have known unless a Sasquatch was communicating with you. So I had it really substantiated by people I implicitly trust. And a lot more is going on. So uh, I've been I've been mind speaking with Sasquatch. Today I did. So it, it, it shouldn't even, you must understand guys, remote viewing, it's not about a distance. So I was looking at this new technology today and I was telling the Sasquatch about it and uh, I, I could hear them. Ash hears them. You can, guys, third eye spies, remote speaking, remote viewing, remote communication. It's all very legit and real. So uh, I, try, I try to talk to them a lot. I don't want to sound like a crazy person because this is hard because I just started doing this and I feel like a crazy person, you know. But, uh, you know, crazy like Einstein when he was talking about his theory of relativity, you know, crazy like... Anybody who's come along with a major discovery and they go, dude, you're crazy. There's no such thing as whales. There's no such thing as gorillas. There's no such thing as fill in the blank, right? No such thing as atoms. And then, you know, at the end of the day, it's all substantiated. So I really, I really feel it. And uh, it's, it's helping me in my life dramatically. So hello, I finally got logged on to watch. That's awesome. This is Oklahoma Cryptid Search Team. O-C-T-S. Super cool. So. Hi, Todd. Have you received any gift from Sasquatch this year? Oh. They, I was just looking at a video where they were moving stones from an expedition. Did I get a gift? Um, yeah. Yeah, I did. And at the beginning, the, the, the rock, the uh, the rocks that came up in the very first expedition out there. It's, that expedition is a picture of me with my little daughter. And uh, yeah, so that was a gift for me. There's probably other things I just can't think of maybe not maybe that was the only gift i got this year with that pile of rocks so they've made uh, a couple they made another pile of rocks uh in a spot so maybe that was a gift you could say but uh like no berries wreaths they've made wreaths of of uh branches all tied together for me they haven't done that in a long time so jason says drones are sweet oh my god the technology is freaking amazing right so i have this old drone looks like a, a lego drone <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get rid of it because I loved it. It cost me like eight grand for the darn thing. And it's still over sitting here and it's just it's just worthless. So uh, Garth, the MD, gave me this really nice drone, like a $5,000 drone. This My $8,000 drone that's 10 years old is probably not worth 100 bucks compared to this you know, $5,000 drone I've got sitting over here. I've been following since 2011. My question, why would the government want to kill or cover up the existence? Oh, dude, money. Are you kidding me? I've tried to... Like in Nordag, they have all these logging rights in there. I can't even, I tried to buy the logging rights from the logging company that owned them. They are not giving up nothing. They know there's Sasquatch there. They don't want this research to happen. So quick story. Let me tell you something. So in the Nordag region, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, whatever it was, someone alleged the grizzly bear population was uh, in danger. Grizzly bears, a known species that that they can study and, and substantiate the population. So they shut down all logging, forestry, natural gas, everything in this whole Nordic, Nordic, Nordic region. It's like Yellowhead country. It that that place produces four hundred million dollars a year in industry: logging, natural gas, uh, whatever all the things they do. I don't know. Propane, propane is natural gas, but uh, I don't know. They they do a bunch of things up there. Oil, whatever. So you know how many people lost their jobs, lost their mortgages, like. People who have jobs and work lost, didn't have a job for four years. After four years, they went, yeah, grizzly bears are okay. Go back to work. If a Sasquatch was proven, maybe, how would they ever be able to open 
You know, they're all, they're terrified of this stuff, environmental stuff coming in, all this. Dude, money. I'm telling you, money. I've got uh, uh, a lady I'm working with with Washington right now. She thinks she can go convince the logging companies that it's in their best interest to allow the discovery of Sasquatch to happen. You know, it's it's wonderful. I It's, she's, it's amazing. She's this new person and she's got this wonderful open heart. She has no idea the money hungry evil sons of bitches that like john bitternagel told me this so part of what he did was he he for a time in his career he worked with logging companies where he gave them he signed off on them logging particular areas he said todd i had to do it i had to stop doing it because i couldn't sleep at night it's literally like working for the devil giving them permission to destroy and rape and annihilate an ecology with your signature phd john bitternagel on it and uh man i can understand that so uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty scary thing. These guys are just interested in money. If you ever, a lot of these loggers. I mean, I'm not trying to make s s people sound evil and stuff, but it's really. There's a lot of money, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. They're they're taking in Van on Vancouver Island. There were spots where these they had these two three hundred year old trees with beautiful amazing wood. They they took those double bladed helicopters and lifted them out like that. That's like they're going everywhere. They're like termites. Every little spot, they're ripping those logs out because they're worth a damn fortune. Those trees are very valuable. And when they're double, when they're helicoptering them off the side, mountainsides, going up there and cutting them and doing all that work, it's a lot of money, guys. A lot, a lot of money. So, um, peace and love. I guess we had a negative person on here. Third Eye TV. Hey, Todd. What were we just talking about? Third Eye Spies, the movie? Third Eye TV. This is definitely uh, your right place. Hello from Central Coast, California. I have some Bigfoot stories from Big Sur. That's awesome. Uh, if you have Bigfoot stories, you can do email uh, discoveringbigfootpodcast at gmail.com and you can come talk about it on the podcast. I would love that. So hello from Oklahoma. Look at that. People from all over the place. Subscribe to the channel, guys. And subscriptions are going up. I'm working really hard on the channel right now. The YouTube channel is very valuable to me. So um, really working on it. Johnny Rocket BC. Vertical takeoff and landing vertical takeoff and landing what's this aircraft include fixed wing however take off vertically as well as helicopters well that's cool thanks for the int thanks for the information johnny hello from texas yeah we got some texas people texas logan's chatting with me today isn't filming sasquatch without permission forbidden it's a slippery slope like people might mock at what he says there but uh i i do i literally have to esp to them and ask them for permission. That's what I was doing. That's what I was talking about today. I was literally telling the Sasquatch, look what I got. Look what the, look at this new capability. Look at this drone and what it's capable of. Now what? And I had Ashley here and we were trying to talk to the Sasquatch and getting my perspectives. And so, uh, yeah, lots going on. I had a dream about a Sasquatch. Third Eye TV, are you sure it was a dream? You weren't actually communicating with one? Aloha from Nia Bay. Hello. Well, this is... Maintenance worker Aloha from Nia Bay. <laughs> How you doing, my friend? Thanks for coming on today. Coming to Nia Bay in what is a couple months now, just a couple months away, two months. Uh, they carry a wide range of cameras for search and rescue. Man, they do, and that's what it is. That's it's a new search and rescue camera. Hello, Billy Connolly. Not the real Billy Connolly. Fuzzy Tiger Cat. Can you please tell Kyle to get a new mic? <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Just uh, just type that in on the on the comments so uh problem is if the way we do the live shows though if he had a really excellent mic then you know um it kind of throws it off with people that are doing the show because they can't have excellent mics this is not the joe rogan podcast and uh we're not people in studio with these incredible you know four thousand dollar mics and amazing sound so uh but i appreciate that and if you have a suggestion for kyle then please send it to him Hello from St. Augustine, Florida, where they have the skunk ape. I don't like that name at all. That's one thing I really, that's one that really bothers me. Bigfoot's kind of like, I have trouble with Bigfoot, but skunk ape is not cool. So hello from New Hampshire. Thank you for tuning in, Straw Dog. Keep rolling with the changes. I Right? You got to. You got to. If you're not changing, you're not growing. If you're not growing, you're deceased you're dying you're negative so you gotta grow old guys you gotta keep rolling with the changes so important hey could everyone please like it's free and it helps thanks casey uh we got 27 like 
27 lights out of 99 people come on let's see. oh you're talking about likes cool yeah uh sure do like the video guys go to the horn hunting february 4th and hope to find some new signs that's awesome keep us informed russell so it is the real billy Connolly, really really like i'm a, i love billy Connolly. just love the guy he's just uh how to train your dragon and uh i like those stories like that you know uh what was that open season he was so great in that i am a full-time researcher thank you for putting that up andy and there might there might actually i have to i have to come up with the finances guys to get this new drone it's going to be probably at the end of the day it's going to be like ten thousand dollars so i'm going to figure that out i don't know i don't know if i want to do patreon like a one of those gofundmes or something but uh, we'll see how it goes we'll figure it out uh it's going to get real important i actually like to go to nia bay with that drone and go kick some ass with it because man that would be amazing but i am a full-time researcher and if it is very affordable to you go to patreon there's a link for it or go to uh, discoveringbigfoot.org i have a paypal donation there if you're passionate about sasquatch this is what i do i'm i am i am a legitimate full-time sasquatch researcher and i'm not some bs dude who does tv shows and takes money and does nothing to give back i'm all about giving back i teach people i help i talk to people about their experiences and I'm boots on the ground fighting for this discovery, guys. Like, bleeding for it. Like, risking my neck, all my heart put into this. And uh, respect to all you expeditioners that come out, too, man. I am so grateful. You people are, you guys are tough. Like, it blows my mind. I'm so honored to people come out and play. People literally, like, at this point, it's probably over 100 people have entrusted their lives to me to come out and do an expedition. You know, so I'm so flattered when that happens and I take such good care of people. It matters to me so much because, you know, these these women are going home to their husbands and, you know, fathers or sisters, children. Same thing with these dads are going home to their wives and their these are important people. And you, I see I see the risk that you guys take. And I'm honored. I'm honored that Survivor Man trusted me. I'm honored that Jeff and John Benenagel and all you expeditioners entrusted me. TV show people come out there, man. I make a mistake. They die. So uh, it's really, uh, yeah, it's really important stuff. So but it's it's an honor for me to do that for people, if that makes sense. So um, nameless preacher, how to go to heaven. Thank you for tuning in. I don't recognize that one. <laughs> Holy crap, you're live. Why aren't you on Twitter? I, yeah, I just don't do Twitter. It's, that's too much, man. I, I really enjoy Instagram. And uh, Facebook is good, too. I, I do that. And then I do YouTube. That's three social medias, man. I can't do Twitter. Oh, my God. It'd just be too much. I don't believe animals, Sasquatch include, can know good and evil. But, of course, they sense emotions just like dogs. I don't believe animals, Sasquatch included, can know good and evil. Well, yeah, but it's, it's not really about that. It's your intention, right? You, you can know this, Fabian. Fabian, Fabian. Cows are domesticated and they have very little wild instinct now left. You can walk up on a cow. Just walk up. Just walk up to a cow. No problem. No problem. Walk around a cow. No problem. Get on all fours and sneak up on them. See what happens. Just try that. You want to see a cow lose its mind? Hmm? Charge at you? So, and a cow. And I'll tell you, when you when you walk and you have an open heart and a cow disregards you, that's respect. That's, that, it can be impressive. When you get on all fours and you start crawling, I can't not feel like I'm just like hunting. Mm, like my my facial expression changes. I can't go, la la la, I'm on all fours moving towards you. Just, I just something happens and your intent changes and you you can feel it. It's very it's very nature. I love that. You should guys should try that, people. Just walk a little bit, just walk and just feel your intent. This is how I feel. Then get on all fours and move towards something with a bird or a tree or I don't know, a house. And you'll feel your intent change. And that's not it's it is a wolf evil because it kills a deer well i'll tell you i'll promise you one thing the deer sure think wolves are evil and they hate them because they kill their babies and kill them and eat them so but are wolves really evil do we consider wolves evil and they're not so bears aren't evil they love to kill babies and kill animals and so yeah i want to see real bigfoot please show us some of them we'll just watch my documentary Tons of Bigfoot on there. Sling Blade says, Les Stroud says he never has seen anything. What? But he's also said something. I don't, I, I don't know what to tell you. You saw the episode, watch the episodes of Survivor Man Bigfoot. So you saw a lot. I mean, 
he was involved in a lot and uh but he didn't see a sasquatch so uh yeah i don't know what to tell you he live interacted with the sasquatch on multiple times every episode he did see the tracks he saw the apples get taken he heard them out in the wilderness you know something sat on him what was that did a bear come sit on him and walk away i don't think so two ways to document your bigfoot encounter and that's awesome yeah do that uh, you can go to the website, which a link is there if you want to document it, or you can uh, send an email to, and you can see that under Andy's thing there. It says uh, discovery, uh, Bigfoot encounter at gmail.com is an email address. Hello, this fine day and night. Hello, bipedal male. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> is that Jason? Do I know bipedal male hominid? That's funny. Uh, that's how a, a friend of mine was going to identify in a court of law as a bipedal, as a bipedal hominid. Didn't say male though. Same here with me. I sent you some of the stuff and pics. Thank you, Great Outdoors Biggie. Uh, I just have to go through my emails. But the Sasquatch are, or animals have the same senses as kind of animals, uh, but they are part of human something else. Okay. Um, I agree. It's their home. Yes, Sasquatch, the wilderness is their home. Um, Michael James, I first was amazed at Todd's documentary. Then I heard some reviews on other kickbacks after it's coming out about Todd's discoveries being fraudulent and hoaxes. Well, Michael actually was just talking to me about this today. So this is uh, the lady in my life. She does expeditions with me. She's only, she's been with me for about a, coming on a year and a half now. And just listen to them. They go, it's a hoax. And they go, well, where's the evidence? And they go, what do you mean evidence? Where's the suit? Where's any proof of any one of his videos being fraudulent? I have eight. And you, you just hear the silence. Why? Well, it's obviously just fake. Yeah, but how? How do you know that? The Patterson footage. Ah, it's obviously fake. Really? How do you know that? Well, it's been proven. No, it hasn't. You're lying. Somebody says something stupid. I mean, Jeff Meldrum, I'll tell you, you want to talk about heat. Jeff Meldrum and, and even Survivor Man, before they started working with me, and even after they started working with me, Jeff did the movie with me and all that other stuff. He still will come out and do an expedition. We the same with Survivor Man. John Bitternagel never stopped working with me. So, you know, and believe me, they've been to the festivals, they've heard the haters, and nobody has had anything to cause them pause. Do you understand that? So just let them hate. I don't know. Whatever. I mean, what the hell? I you do you think all the expeditioners are all lying? Like even Ashley was telling me, like, man, I've been out with you. I've seen a Sasquatch twice. I've seen your evidence. She goes, well, she shouldn't have said this, but if you're the, if, if you're a hoaxer, you're the greatest hoaxer that's ever lived. Like, it's unbelievable what you do. But I'm not. She said that just to kind of be funny. But I can't hoax this stuff, guys. I don't got some dude running around the bush. Come on. I, do, I don't know what to say. Did I hoax the DNA? You know, all that stuff that happened on Survivor, man, that is absolutely real. When he says, I just heard something and I have no idea. It's, it sounded like some big giant hominid booming around and there's big... Bigfoot tracks on the ground. The apples got taken. Like, you know, it's Sasquatch. Remember, he only did three days at a time with me. He never even spent a week in the bush with me. He was getting that kind of success. It's pretty mind-blowing. So, they are awesome, but God made them. Uh, we should be in awe of God for these awesome apes. Thank you for your perspective. I was majorly disappointed. Then I did some more digging and my hopes were relifted. Uh, there is so much miss and purposeful disinformation of you will. Maybe it means if you will. About me? Well, yeah. Holy crap. And there's lies, man. There's outright lies. I see stuff. Oh, my God. I see so much lies. People just say the most disgusting. It just pisses me off. The stupid stuff people say. Oh, Todd's just getting rich because of all the money he makes. Really? Have you seen my bank account statements? So you don't really know. So shut your mouth because you have no idea what it takes. You have no idea what's going on. Like, like uh, there, there was a time when I was single a while ago and I had these crazy narcissistic women dating me. I couldn't figure out how this was happening to me. And then uh, one of them actually said to me, you're not worth $4.6 million. I go, what the hell are you talking about? If you look up Todd Standing's net worth, it says I'm worth like millions and millions of dollars. And I know why. Because my movie made millions and millions of dollars. And the distribution company took it all. I didn't get that money. <laughs> if you don't know about how distribution companies work, I'll tell you. I did 99% of the work and 
paid for 100%. They paid for nothing. They basically left the movie for free. But let's just say they did 1% work, which they didn't. They basically took my movie and hit enter and put it in the system. So they do 1% of the work and take 99% of the money. That's how it works. So literally, if, if $4 million came in, just do the math. I got 1% of that. 1%. Did I even get 1%? Oof, probably didn't even get that. I don't want to talk about it, though. Whatever. I'm happy the movie got distributed and it was on Netflix. It's been amazing. Do they mind speak to me? I just talked about that. Yes. Um, what's up here? Jody, people t- saying hi. Hey, Justin, hi. Um, Judy, Charles says the animals, I try to tell him they're not. Well, that's that's very... I don't like having that conversation. Boy, that con- that's, that's one of my most... Dis- I'm an animal. I'm a mammal. I'm a primate. I'm a hominid. I'm a human, right? It goes that way. I'm warm-blooded. I'm a mammal. You can call me a mammal. That's right. I am an animal. Is it animal, vegetable, mineral? These are these are definitions. So, I more specifically though, I'll agree with you. They're most assuredly primates, and now according to the DNA and everything I've seen, they're hominids, like Homo floresiensis, like Neanderthals, like Homo sapiens, human beings. They're hominids, the most advanced hominid, wilderness hominid for sure that's ever lived. So, um, what else have we got here? They're humans and ape style. Again, that that discussion, I don't know, just doesn't really resonate with me. Hey, Todd, keep up the great work. This is from Tristan. Um, You're the only Bigfoot researcher I follow, and I was wondering if you're going on the Joe Rogan podcast anytime soon. Show them up with evidence and shut them up. Yeah, I really want to do the Joe Rogan podcast. I just don't have the connection anymore. Um, years and years, even even with Joe Rogan, this is what seems to have happened is uh, he did the show. People were talking. He did a show talking about me a lot. Put my footage on the show, said it was fake as F. And then tried to contact me. And I he, I did. He did contact. He got the right email. He got the right contact information. Maybe even Survivor Man gave it to him. I don't know. I just didn't want to do the show at the time. This was a long time, like four years ago when Survivor Man did the show. So he just went of a path of a mind that uh, Todd doesn't want to talk to me. He's a coward and he's hiding away and uh, moved on. Justifiably so. I just didn't want to do the show. I, I wasn't I wasn't doing any media at the time. Just my life was just uh, in a, a spin. I wasn't doing any media talking to anybody. So now I would like to do a show with him and I intend to do a show with him. And uh, the contact information I have with him is just totally gone. It's four years old approximately. And uh, that person has nothing to do with the show anymore. So here I am just uh, doing what I can. And when the opportunity arises again, I most assuredly will do the show. I even respect the fact that, uh, you know, he did reach out or that the show reached out just to, just to challenge me. And, uh, and then obviously when I didn't, when I just fell silent, they're like, yeah, he's just full of crap. He's hiding. He's a coward. Don't know me too well though, because I will come and do a show and I would love that. So uh, the ape scene in your doc was crazy. The, oh, the apple scene. Yeah. And I just did a, a little short on it on somebody else's analysis of that apple taking scene, which is really was freaking amazing. I was super happy. So Todd, I believe you don't. Todd, I believe you don't be ashamed. Yeah, thanks, Dominic. I, I, I just uh, have my paradigms, right? So, and it's, uh, there are areas that I'm really uncomfortable. Like, man, it's hard for me. To this day, I don't know how I'm ever going to be comfortable saying the Sasquatch have bred with human beings and produce viable offspring. I don't like saying that, but it's, it's, it's in the DNA. It's a scientific fact. So, but they bred with people? Yuck. So, Todd, what job, what job did you have before you got into Sasquatch? I was a pasteurizer <coughs> for Dairyland. <coughs> Pudo, big, huge company. So, excellent. I loved my job. I loved being a pasteurizer. It was very science-y. It was always uh, science problems, mathematical equations and stuff. And uh, so I brought my education into it. And I, I loved making me look safe for people. And all the butter fats and working with different mixtures and uh, designing new formulas, putting less sugar and more chocolate in and making food healthier. I just loved all that stuff. Pasteurizing at a lower temperature, so less globules, less damage to the milk, healthier milk, cleaner milk, less chemicals. I just loved all that stuff. So 
Uh, I've been a broken record about UFOs for 20 years because I've seen so many. Now onto Sasquatch, but still love you. <laughs> and see, I don't, I don't do UFOs and stuff like that, right? So I have no expertise there. Uh, a lot of uh, like Discovery Channel called me a, a top paranormal researcher, and I was like, no, no, no I just do Bigfoot. And, and it's okay they call me that because I understand Bigfoot's paranormal, but it's not to me. It's, it's very, very real. So. That's one of my brother's O-C-S-T. Cool. For Great Outdoors, Biggie. Um, you guys are talking about Sasquatch being more human than ape. Sasquatch topic. Uh, have you heard them speak actually? No. Like verbally go, hi. Well, no. No, I've never heard them say like a word. I almost feel like I have because I talk a lot about Ina who was uh, nearly abducted by Kubota. And uh, the big male of the group, who I do know very well, came out and verbally spoke to Kubota. He said, he said, uh, Kubota, Iha, Ina. And what I think he, and he was pointing to the ground, I think he meant put Ina down. So uh, cool that, I mean, there's so much to learn from that. And I really believe her. She's the one that named Kubota. That's why I call video eight in my movie Kubota now. Because I believe she did have an encounter. Strongly believe it. Like really, really believe it. Um, it's on one of my YouTube videos. But uh, again, that substantiates something to me too. Was a big learning lesson is <clears throat> if you have ESP, can you shut yourself off? And I believe that uh, Seeger, I call him, from the main, the big dominant male, <clears throat> had to verbally talk to Kubota because the Kubota was shutting himself off. He was doing something he wasn't supposed to do, and he was shutting off his ESP and his people couldn't read him. That's why he was spoken to verbally. You won't you won't listen to me. You shut your mind off, and you can't hear what I'm saying, so I'm going to verbally tell you, Kubota, put her down. Put down Ina. So a lot was learned from that situation, and I think that's absolutely amazing. I have to try new territory as their hunting trail got burned up last summer. Sorry to hear that, Russell. Good luck on your new work, though. Hi, Todd. Forget about the naysayers and keep... I totally don't have time for that naysayer crap. It's, you know, it is... I don't... I feel like I'm just talking to ignoramuses, honestly. I feel like I'm going around saying, hey, uh, the earth is round. Like, no, it's flat. And I show them pictures and I show them evidence of it being round. They go, nah, you're crazy. The world's flat. It's not round. And I'm like, okay, flat earther. Because the evidence of Sasquatch is so significant. Hello from Denver, Colorado. Ever Sasquatch here? Not yet. Man, I'd love to come to Colorado. I flew into Colorado and spent like hours there with a couple of people. But uh, no, Australian cryptozoology tribe. Wow, the Yowies mind speak with me. Absolutely, right? Oh, man, I got some stuff about Yowies, guys. Even, I'll read your thing here for first. The Yowies mind speak with me. They also give me into intuitive dreams and astral travel experience, which is very real, guys. Like that is very cool stuff with them and vibrational energy healing which is all resonates with me totally uh completely agree with you so let me tell you guys something this is a big deal so adam who's in my videos went back to australia he may have and he's just gonna he's being conservative but he may have found tree breaks adam is trained with tree breaks he's gonna go back he's gonna properly identify them to me because if that's real they're totally mind speaking sasquatch have to be because if the Yowie has been separated from Sasquatch, they've been separated for over 100,000 years, like conservatively, it's been significant, where Australian was connected to the continents, right? So with 100,000 years of, of separation, there's no way they were doing tree breaks 100,000 years ago and they've still been doing it. It's very, very unlikely. It would have been lost unless they're mind speaking with each other about how to communicate and how to do things. Mind speaking about tree breaks and structures and survival and what's going on in the world. So... It's, 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 it's a part of substantiating that theory. And if Adam gets back to me, says they are indeed Sasquatch tree breaks, as you've taught me and trained me, Todd, then the Yahweh yeah, are doing tree breaks like the, uh, the Sasquatch here in North America. And that's profoundly amazing news. I'm very excited about it. So hello, Lenita. Uh, prayers for Steve's friend who was burned. Yes, Thank you for that. Katie F. Hi, Todd. Is that my Katie? From Co you want to talk about Colorado? That could be Katie Colorado here. Hello, Katie. <clears throat> um, Todd, I want, I want to know how you run into Skinwalker. What? 
how you run into a skinwalker with them and dog. I don't do any skinwalker. Skinwalker stuff is, I think it's BS the way they do it. I was taught about what a skinwalker is. There's nothing like the, the horror movie crap. It's simply my teacher talked about it uh, where they would do these exercises when, when you're going to be an elk hunter. You had to go learn to be an elk and live like an elk. So they would take an elk hide and put that on them and they would become the elk. They would forage like the elk, drink water like the elk, think like an elk. That's what a skinwalker is. According to the Crees, according to the Blackfeet, uh, according to the natives that I've worked with. So this whole make it into some horror thing is just garbage. And I don't know anything about dogmen. I've never seen any evidence of dogmen that impressed me and I, that's it. Todd, how often do you encounter with grizzly bears? Grizzly bears? Jason got to see a grizzly bear this year, man. We got 40 yards face-to-face -face with a grizzly bear walking up, like coming up on a trail on a grizzly bear. Um, so that was exciting for him because he's from Ontario. He'd never seen a grizzly bear. But I'd say uh, like this year on the trails, four times I bumped into grizzly bears. Black bears, uh, three times as much probably. So... Andy, that's why they smell like stink in some regions. Awful stink. Okay. Dogmen here run the Bigfoots. I, I don't know anything about dogmen. I have no evidence of them. The DNA doesn't lie. Yeah, DNA is legit, guys. So it was done by paleo DNA. So, um, I, okay, lots of questions here. Hi, Jody. Uh, for the most part, are they gentle? Of course, of course, if they are respect, well, you can't say, you can't say dogs are all gentle. You can't say cats are all gentle. Like every individual is different. You know, my, I have a Rottweiler. She's going to probably lick you to death. And she doesn't bite things. She's just a sweetheart. But you know, there's some Rotties that'll bite your face off. So it's even with people, some people are complete jerks. And if you go on their property, they're going to shoot you. And other people, you go walk on their property, they go, Hey, go, go a little to the left. There's some berries over there. Enjoy. It's my property. Right. But you're welcome on it, so you can't say stuff like that. And then they're going to be pissed off, Sasquatch. Some asshole shoots, some ass shoots at them. They're going to be pretty PO'd, right? So, uh, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. 53 likes. <laughs> hey, Casey. Concerned about the lights. Hey, do you think dog... Uh, I don't do dogmen, guys. No dog. I have no knowledge of dogmen any more than I have knowledge of aliens, any more than I have knowledge of werewolves. I don't know anything about it. So, what's up with Todd's upper and lower lips? I don't know. So, they're my lips. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks. Okay. Love your work, Todd. Thank you. Great outdoors. Uh, Bernie says, if the logging industry has so much money and power and influence, why would the Canadian government act against their interests in favor of Sasquatch? Exactly. That's basically a statement that's true. They do. They have, they have lobbyists. They put politicians in power. If you ever look, not just in Canada, in the United States, if you look at the Republican and the Democratic parties, the top 10 investors, it's oil and forestry are just switched around. So it doesn't matter who wins. The, the Literally, the, the, the main funding funders of the campaign that pay for the president are oil, gas, you know, whatever. It's, it's steel. It's those top 10 are on both sides. So the president owes them. Do you guys understand that? Same thing in Canada, right? The, our prime minister's worth hundreds of millions of dollars now, especially after COVID. Gee, I wonder what happened there. He's a he's an extremely wealthy man. He didn't get paid much. To, you know, what's the president make? $400,000 a year? Why are they worth millions and millions? Nobody asks these questions. And our prime minister in Canada is filthy, stinking rich. I heard he was worth like $440 million. Okay, being a prime minister shouldn't pay more than... You know, I don't know what it is, like $300,000 a year. So how did he become, he can't make a million dollars, really. So how come he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars? Corruption. Look, it's, it, the system is corrupt, guys. It's, it's, it's nothing but corrupt. So it's so freaking corrupt. And we just, you look at the World Health Organization that's happening right now. I saw Rebel News go out there. And there are guys that are just basically money, billionaires out there. And they're on the board of directors and they're making decisions. What the hell gives them the right? They're rich. Okay. What do they do to earn the position? They're just rich. And they're going to stay rich and get richer. They're influencing the World Health Organization so they can get richer. They're money men, hell-bent on making more money. If you don't think that's not corrupt, 
these guys are going to invest, tell the world, they're on the board of directors for the World Health Organization. They're going to make it happen a certain way so they make money. And if you think they're in, they have any, their interests have anything to do with people and the corruption and humanity, guys, it's, it's, it's disgusting. And I don't think anybody's out there going to go, no, no, no. The president of the United States is just, he's just out for the people. He's a good guy. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But uh, I just don't feel it. That's why I was excited about Trump. But don't, 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 <laughs> don't get mad. I just wanted, I just thought Trump might have the ability to make his own decisions. So that's what excited me about him becoming president. I thought, you know, he's not going to be influenced by wealth. He's just going to do what's in his, what he, he might believe is in the best interest of the American people. So uh, anyways, the, we don't do politics here, so apologies if I got off on that. So, Ohio Bigfoot, yes, I believe there are Bigfoot in Ohio. I kind of know Todd's type. Mm, you're stereotyping me? Not a good idea to do. You try to put me in a peg and I just come out of it. I don't know anybody ever in the history of the human species that's done backcountry crazy expeditions the way I have. And I don't know if anybody ever will do that kind of stuff again. I'm not training. Anybody who's training under me is not going to do that. I, I don't recommend it. It's life-threatening, dangerous. And uh, honestly, I don't. there's no chance I would be here if the Sasquatch hadn't taken care of me and kept me safe. So uh, if you go and try to do what I did and you don't get the Sasquatch out there protecting you and watching over you, you'll die. I should have been dead so many times. I remember when Search and Rescue, there's that video about me and Search and Rescue went looking for me, which is real. They really did. That really did happen. The, uh, the, the local police pulled me aside and told me, said, dude, like, you do, how many backcountry expeditions have you done? I don't know. At that time, I'd done like 15. They go, oh, so the odds of you dying are pretty much 100%. You're going to be a corpse soon. I go, what do you mean? Oh, well, one in 10 people that go out on backcountry expeditions are never seen again or die. Gone, dead. So you have a, you have a 10% chance every time you go out. So if you go out 10 times, the odds of you being dead are pretty much 100%. But... I just said, you know, screw you and your stats, stick them up your rear end. But uh, uh, they're right, and I agree with that. It's freaking dangerous, guys. So many things go wrong. It's just it's ridiculous, the stuff that can happen. So the ways, I, I literally, <clears throat> just simply put one time, imagine this. So I went out <clears throat> on an expedition, and uh, I ran out of food, but it was okay, because I, I, I had enough, I knew I could get back the distance that I needed to. And so, but I went out a little, a little further than I should have. And then it snowed three feet while I was sleeping. Well, I got up and just, you know, by the time I was uh, a day into a three day hike, there was three feet of snow on the ground. If you know anything about uh, life and death situations, three feet of snow on the ground takes a two day hike and turns it into a five day hike. Dead. No way I can survive that. I have no food. So, um, you know, I shouldn't be here after just, just little things like that little tiny gush. I, I, I believed in the past <clears throat> that uh, I had this horrible incident where I fell and wiped on the ice. I was bleeding to death. I had jammed a log into my leg and I was bleeding. And I was very convinced that uh, if the sun hadn't come up that day and warmed my body, I would have never woke up. If it had been a cold day and windy and raining, I wouldn't be here. <clears throat> Literally, the, the weather has saved my life or nearly killed it. And that just simple things like that. And, and if you think that doesn't matter... <sighs> You haven't gone back country and struggled through that stuff, man. It's brutal. Like, it has no sympathy for you. I literally remember walking down a trail once. Imagine this. This is this will blow your mind. So I'm walking down this game trail way in the back country wilderness. <clears throat> Suddenly a, a, a cow moose comes out and cuts me off. And she's got a young uh, bull moose, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, just a, a youth, whatever that the name for them is. A calf, a bull moose calf. He's about 300 pounds, just muscly as hell, like a little beast. So she cuts me off from stopping and going down this trail, and her calf starts going down that trail, and I'm just going to back away. Well, as that calf is walking down the trail that I was just walking on, a black bear pops out of nowhere in ambush, grabs this 300-pound bull moose calf who's a beast, way stronger and tougher than me, and kills him. I literally am watching 30 yards away, sweating going oh my god that was supposed to be me dead nobody would have ever found my body and i'll tell you man that was like i blinked and that freaking that bull moose was on his back with this bear on his throat ripping him open the most horrible thing you ever saw and the cow moose is there going oh guess i don't have my baby anymore 
two-year-old baby dead, eaten by a bear. So these are the layers of what you're dealing with out in the bush, guys. So that's why I just don't do that stuff. It's, it's not reasonable. It's not necessary anymore. It's not going to help the discovery. If you read all of what I said, you would know what I said was positive. Okay, there's a little bit of discrepancies going on here. I'm sorry to hear that. Man cuts down paper to make paper. Man cuts down paper to make paper? Okay. Uh, any validity to the amount of trees put in the teepee structure related to the amount of Bigfoot in the tribe? Heard this on Survivor Man. I don't think so. <clears throat> I just don't think so. But there's a lot of other amazing things that happened in that structure that even Survivor Man didn't know at the time. I had a PhD come out and make notes of it was built clockwise. And the first tree in was true north. So little things like that that just can't be a coincidence. And we went to another structure, it was the same thing. First tree in was true north, and then it was built clockwise. So a lot of intelligence going on there and uh, very, very amazing stuff. The Vernon 52, above all in everything I have learned about Sasquatch, they seem to be all about oneness of nature and oneness of human consciousness. Oh my God, I agree. I think that, I think that that is what they can help us. That's, that's my whole life. I mean, you might as well copy and paste that. Um, John Bitternagel would say this. <clears throat> Anybody who sees a Sasquatch discovers it. And then after that, you know, if they go into public, there's discomfort and ridicule and all that kind of stuff. But that's how they make the discovery. I'm, I'm as his student, as his uh, protege coming up under John, I'll take it to another level. Anybody who can mind speak with a Sasquatch discovers it because they just want to communicate with you. They're trying to talk to you. And if you if you open up your mind, even even you don't have to speak where you're re receiving is hard, guys. Man, I just started receiving this year. It's really tough, and I encourage you to do that. Silence your mind and just listen, and receive what's what's coming in, and then and then and then translate it into something. Because they're not going to say, "Hi, I am a Sasquatch." They're going to do something like they're going to show images, and 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 you have to deduce what those images mean, like little video images is what I call them. So uh, that's how you discover Sasquatch. Open your mind to them, let them read you, and then make that discovery. And once once that happens for you, you'll know. When that comes to you, you'll know. That's the discovery now. That's what I'm teaching all my expeditioners. That's what I'm, you know, trying to teach anybody out there is really just discover it spiritually. Discover it by opening your empathic abilities and opening, becoming transparent and just exposing the truth of who you are. And they'll read that. And if they think that you're connected enough to, to meet them, they'll make the introduction. Because they're the teachers and they truly decide. So that's my show for today. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I have so much fun doing these live shows. And I have an exciting piece of news too, guys. So it's a done deal. The live shows every year, for those of you who've been following me for a long time, always stop when I'm on expedition. Oh, I got news. We got Wi-Fi coming out to way crazy backcountry. The, the live shows are going to be super spectacular every second week when we're out in the bush right can you imagine a live show in sasquatch habitat hello ladies and gentlemen today we just saw a sasquatch over here we heard a sasquatch over there there's a brand new tree break over here let's talk live on expedition with todd standing so i'm very very excited about that you can see i'm just lit up about it so really really cool good news lots of amazing things happening the discovery has happened and continues to grow Thanks to your support, and uh, uh, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Um, there'll be a Thursday show tomorrow, Sasquatch Sunday, the podcast from Kyle this Saturday. So uh, thanks for your support. Take care of yourselves. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye for now.